Okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the March 28th Chaos Community Call. Kevin, good to have you here. Ruth, good to have you here. Ruth. Yeah. All right. I will share my screen. So I, if you could add yourself, today's questions, favorite mode of transportation. It could even be a mode of transportation that you don't have in the city. I had thought about, uh, I say subway probably because I'm not on one every day. I'm sure somebody who rides a subway every day might disagree with me, but um, boat, I like boat <laughs> up and down the Missouri River <laughs> out here. Are you really a boat person? Yeah, but I, I actually, I like, uh, I like big water, like the oh, Great Lakes okay. and uh, Interesting. Like large, large freshwater lakes. Uh, so I have just learned something about you. I didn't know you like that. Yep, hiking, hiking, kayaking, boating uh, are my kind of my favorite things. So kayaking is great. I've I've been kayaking uh, in Lake Superior mm -hmm. along the sea cliffs. Yes, in the, the uh, uh, Apostle Islands. Uh, up in that up in that general area, yes. It wasn't around the Apostle Islands. But, okay. Um, the Apostle, the Apostle Islands are an amazing place to kayak. I do like that. No, Bayfield is amazing. Yeah. So it's a cute little town. And um, mm -hmm. so anyway, all right. Yeah, cool. yeah, I love it up there. Uh, oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, I agree. Um, so I, I would just like to, to the three people here and anybody that might watch this video, I'd like to give a giant thank you to Enoch. Um, Enoch really, so we were having issues with the badging bot. I don't know if y'all, y'all knew this, but it was not, basically, I think there were, there were a, few, a number of issues with it and Enoch really put in a, just a ton of time, uh, getting that working. And of course the timing of the badging bot giving problems was right at the same time that we were getting a lot of applications. Doesn't that always how it seems to work? <laughs> so, um, so Enoch, thank you for Thank you for the work that you do. That was really great. Um, actually, Ruth, do you have any updates on badging at the moment? So I know that people have been working on yeah. kind of some of the badging pages. You know what I mean? Like the. Let me let me send the link. Uh, give me one second. Okay. The link, um, because no. can we work yeah. or just give me one minute. Okay, no problem. Okay. Hopefully. Yeah, check the chat. So it's for the, okay. for the website and then some ideas for the what do I click? Yeah, like this. <laughs> you don't click anything. This is just the design. <laughs> you just okay. Click yeah. Like when you scroll down, you'd see like where you can navigate to the other pages. And there's a, there should be, how does this even work? There should be like a two, three, four at the bottom. Are you seeing it? Like to navigate, yeah. Yeah, but, but the first one, the landing page. Yeah. These are just placeholders for now. Okay. But if you if you toggle on the, I think if you toggle on them, you'd see the. No review. Yeah, yeah. So you you see how it's kind of like, I, I'm so bad at explaining these things. But it's it's exactly okay. <laughs> we're trying to like blend in um all in brands into chaos. So you can see how when you toggle, like we have chaos colors and then like um, all in colors as well. So okay. yeah, you can. Gotcha. So this is for project badging. I guess yeah. I, for some reason I missed that project part up there on the top. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, wait, you were asking up. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. <laughs> You're asking about event badging, right? Well, I, I was just asking about badging in general. So I was, because I know that there's work being done on event badging too, kind of on the, the website. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like a d design. Yeah, the, the, the website is still in progress. Let me send. 
let me send the link to okay. that. That's okay. why we have a couple of issues open. Okay. Uh, Kevin, can you drop the minutes in for people that have come? Uh, yeah. So okay. the website is on Netlify currently. But okay. this is for if, now this is for events button and not project mm -hmm. button. Are we okay. not using are we not using chaos branding for for DEI event stuff? Event, yes. Yeah, so, so this is how far and some of this text has dummy text, but this is how far the event badging has gone. Um there are open up issues um in the repo. Let me scan back. People are still working on them and okay. taking some time because like some people have like I, I plan to nudge people like some people have wanted to take up the issue but have not worked on it. So still work in progress. So Kevin event. And what is this one? Okay, this is Kevin event badging is what you're seeing here. So this will carry just all of the chaos stuff. Mm -hmm. It and probably the, the it probably needs to have a, a stronger tie to chaos. This one event badging. Yeah, well, or both, but uh, but yeah, even with event badging, the only the only tie here is, uh, I mean, so we mentioned what that it's a chaos badge. But there's no, there's no real mention of what chaos is or what the connection to DEI badging is for chaos. So it's not clear to me that DEI badging is a chaos initiative. Okay, so it, it's like the, at the top there, chaos DEI badging would be there. Some of the text here still need to work. So maybe some links to what chaos is or okay a description of what chaos is okay or the, the... i mean this will this will be linked off of our main page correct yeah from the from the badging page what is yeah. that we want to have? uh from the in fact take it how do we yeah, from the from the website, we'll probably link off of main navigation to get to this. Yeah, from the chaos website. Yeah, but if they if they arrive if they arrive on this website without going through that step, uh, I'm saying there needs to be kind of some directionality the other direction as well. Yeah, so so Kevin, we that would be on the content side, right? Like working up on the content to show chaos. Yeah, yeah, just just kind of a, a clear, clear kind of description of DEI badging's relationship with chaos and maybe a link back to the chaos website if they need if they want more information. Well, couldn't we I mean, won't this navigation at the top still be part of the will we keep the chaos navigation or no, would that not be possible? You know, what I'm talking about No, this is a separate website. Yeah, okay, so this won't exist in the WordPress world at all. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how they're building it, but it's a separate. It's uh, it's hosted separately. It's a completely separate uh, website. So when we okay. when we link when we link to it off of the chaos website, it'll be it's gone, right? So okay. if they uh, if they want to get back to the chaos website to find other information, they'll have to hit the back button or. We'll have to have some sort of link on this website taking us to uh, taking us back to this website, right? So we'll we'll link to this out of if you go back the yeah badging, that's where it'll link from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, In the main like navigation. You'll click that, yeah, you'll click that, and then it'll basically just go here. Yep, to a to a completely separate website. I understand? Yes. Okay. Um, Okay. So and I'm and I'm saying just because of that, we do need to make sure that we're kind of explicit about the relationship between chaos and chaos badging, and we give people kind of options to navigate back and forth. 
So my thought would, would be that if they're on this DEI badging website, they may want to know more information about chaos. Mm -hmm. So we should give them the ability to, to find that information while still being able to navigate back to the, the DEI badging website. What about, what about, I'm understanding that this is two different sites. What about Ruth and Kevin, like this black banner that's up here? You know what I mean? I understand this isn't the WordPress site, but simulating that black banner here, you know, mm -hmm. so just kind of imagine that black, this banner, and I don't know how we would handle these kind of things. Maybe they just don't drop out. They just, they just kind of link back to chaos things like about they just kind of go back to the main chaos page or something i don't know but yeah that when, they work. Click, when they click that the banner essentially stays the same or at least it stays black with chaos up here and then maybe just apply for a badge you see what i'm saying would that help at all kevin uh i don't I mean, I, I guess I kind of see what you're saying, but uh, I mean, so there there is a good there is a good reason to run the website separately, right? So when they when they get to when they get to the when they get to that DEI badging website, it's nice that that site can focus specifically on badging. We don't have to worry about a, a bunch of the other the paths and the navigation. So I I, yeah. I don't know that I would I don't know that I would duplicate the the navigation. From the chaos website on the DEI badge. What about just the what about just have that black banner at top instead of this white banner? And it could just say chaos as it does exactly right here. And mm -hmm. that would actually link back to chaos.community, you know what I mean, on this page. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be nice. And then, uh, and then it could just say instead of this whole navigation, it could just say apply for a badge. You know what I mean? Like up in this spot up here. Yeah. Yeah, that 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 seems pretty reasonable. Uh, who's doing the uh, Ruth? Who's doing the design of the, these pages? Um, Kinsey. Okay. Yeah. So I, I just want to confirm that I understand. So are we saying like the we have the black banner just like the way we have um, the chaos on the chaos website, and then we have the chaos logo. Would 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 there be something about DEI? Like currently what's there is chaos, the, the logo, I mean, on the other side, thank you to the other side. Yeah, currently what we have here is just the chaos logo and then the DEI. So we replace that with just chaos. Yeah, so yeah. I think you would replace this white banner, just basically replace this white banner with this black banner the same mm -hmm. size and the only but the only things that would be included on the black banner are this chaos logo that is mm -hmm. a clickable link back to chaos.community mm -hmm. i don't think to kevin's point any of these things here should be included so this this would just be black at that point and then there probably could still be this button like apply for badge yeah so maybe these navigation parts still stay the same as well but Okay. Yeah, I think the the home and the about and uh, an event badging can stay the same. Okay. Okay. Uh, so the, these navigations then would just be replaced by these these okay. one two three four five six seven eight that we have here would just be replaced by those four. Okay. Okay, I get to know. So. It, and that might help with Kevin like your hope to connect it back like if somebody ended up on that page and the top banner said chaos <laughs> you know what i mean yeah yeah Definitely. so that that top banner having chaos with a link back to the website would be very mm -hmm. yeah that would i think that would uh be very helpful That'd be pretty explicit so okay it, it'd be nice if we had a little bit of text on this page that kind of uh did that as well but i think it's already there so maybe i don't know what's in the about us maybe Maybe the about us can be kind of explicit about, yeah. Yeah, it goes into what what we plan to do here is more detail. Yeah, and I'd include a little bit more connection to chaos in here as well. Okay. But uh, but otherwise, yeah, I think it looks great. 
Okay, uh, great. I'm glad we're having this conversation. Okay. And then Kevin, I think to your point on this one, still kind of in the works, I think. So I wouldn't, and the, the issue here is that we do have to kind of coordinate with um, All In, who's mm -hmm. kind of leading this effort, you know, the folks at GitHub. Which is, which is, yeah, which is fine. But, uh, but we do want to yeah. make sure that we want, that we're promoting that chaos branding as well. Of course, we're we really, uh, definitely part of the conversation that we continue to, and see, like, even this, like, I think there's no all in branding, even clearly on here, you know what I mean, from from their perspective. So yeah, I think we need to get that type of branding in here. But this is okay. a, this is going to be a, a separate website, or is this going to be part of the previous website? My my guess is, is Ruth, you can correct me if I'm wrong. My guess is this will be managed through all in. Yeah, they'll, they'll manage everything. It's separate it's also separate from their website yeah okay it'd be it would be it would be cool if we could do that same black banner with chaos in the top left uh but if it's if it's being if it is being run by all in they may want their logo there <laughs> yeah i would yeah. say these are oh, go ahead, we can do chaos and something we can do with chaos and all in at the top yeah, maybe, yeah, exactly. So maybe yeah. these are, I think I would kind of look at this page more as like idea pages, ways to think about what this could look like versus this page, I think it's coming to conclusion. So, okay, great. Um, thank you, that's super helpful. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you, Kingsley. And thank you everybody for that. Um, I did want to make a note that evolution Armstrong, you're on. Evolution Working Group and Common Working Group are merging to bring our strengths together. And so we're um, just a, in as common as helping a lot with um, the development of metrics and metrics models. We're going to be continuing to do that work in common. And I know that Evolution has a number of people, but I think joining Common really makes a lot of sense here. And so I'll, I'm, my plan is, unless somebody has an issue, to remove the Evolution Working Group meeting off of the calendar and probably post something in Slack and maybe even um, in Discourse as well, just kind of, you know, spelling this out for folks or just letting folks know that this is what's happening. So and this was a discussion we had with Armstrong there, who is leading the, the Evolution Working Group. So does anybody have any comments on that? Uh, what are we going, are we going to archive that repo or? I'm not sure. The, the metrics yeah. that are being hosted there currently, would we move those metrics to common? Would we I, keep hosting them on evolution? Yeah, I'm not sure. So I was actually just thinking about that today, specific, not on the spreadsheet, but specifically on the repo. I think my first, first reaction was just to leave the repo. I don't know. It doesn't seem like it really <laughs> takes up a lot of space kind of thing, you know? Um, if we archive it, would that be a problem from a metrics perspective, you know, to... Uh, you know, not not really. I mean, so we've, we've, we've moved, uh, as far as presenting the metrics on the website, we don't present them by uh, focus area anymore. And then mm -hmm. the f focus area would be the big bit. Uh, okay. However, uh, we do kind of still organize our work work around those focus areas, right? So if we if we look at we our, if we look at the yep. spreadsheet, that's kind of how we we think about and come up with some new metrics by focus areas. Uh, so the, those focus areas that in evolution they don't really match with what's happening in common. Uh, uh, a little bit. I mean, if we if we were to move them in, we would we would the metrics would kind of go everywhere. Um, Probably so. So I mean, and the, I, I suppose the main reason to keep it would be to maintain that the the focus area structure as structured under evolution. Yeah, which is which is purely which which once again is not how we present the metrics to users. It's how we organize the yes. work we do around metrics definition, right? So, so it may make sense to continue doing that. 
uh, in that case, it would be up to like common would have to decide where they want to do we want to would do we want to continue. Do we want to continue defining metrics within the evolution repo or do we just want to work in common just kind of roll everything into common yeah yep. okay from a presentation okay. standpoint though it doesn't matter okay and it wouldn't matter like technically if we archived the re repo uh, i mean we'd, we'd have we'd have to move the we'd have to move those those metrics somewhere else they would have to be moved. I guess that was my question. It, once yeah. it's archived, it's like no longer accessible kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, I guess if we archived it as well, we probably want to move a lot of the issues perhaps to common, you know, just kind of like all, like everything that's kind of in progress or has been deployed. Okay. Let's maybe let's talk about this in common this week and see what we would like to do. We could be, we could really kind of take our time figuring that out too and just kind of see what naturally happens. Yeah. Like I said, I don't, when I was thinking about it this morning, it wasn't with respect to the spreadsheet. It was mostly just with the repo. And I was like, mm -hmm. it, I mean, it doesn't seem like a huge cost to keep it open at the moment. So, okay. All right, great. Thank you. Um, Armstrong, did you have any comments on that at all? I don't know if you're accessible. No, I think I'm fine so far. The okay. thing is, as, as Kevin suggests, let's just keep it for now. Then we we can move it to co to common. Then we discuss from common. We can still, since we are merging, we can still be developing things as we define them uh, broader. Okay. I have a couple of ideas okay. that I would think we'll discuss those ideas in the meeting itself. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, that sounds good. Thanks, Armstrong. Okay, um, Kevin and I chatted next to shoot. Kevin and I chatted briefly just about the website. We have a couple open issues. I won't go through them all. Um, but essentially, it's just offering some suggestions on on the website itself, kind of independent from the knowledge base, and then offering some suggestions just kind of on those tiles on the knowledge base and how things might be um, rearranged. Kevin, you had said that you were gonna start taking a look at these, and some of these issues are related to one another. You know, like, some of them are probably gonna to have to be uh, moved to the community repo as well. So when, uh, okay. for the, for some of those documents that need to be created for the knowledge base or for pages that you're asking for, uh, yeah. you know, those those documents wouldn't be created in the website. They would be created in the in the community handbook. Okay. Uh, so I'll kind of when I go through those, I'll I'll kind of organize and make a note of which ones need to be where uh, need to be where. Yeah, okay. and maybe and, and link to them. Maybe create a new issue in the community handbook to address it. Okay, but either way, I'll, um, I'll go. I'll go through these within the next week and try to resolve as many as I can. Okay, a lot of them, they're not like huge structural changes. They're just kind of moving things. Like the working group description, for example, is currently on that main page, and we have a whole like some of our language. Time. Some of our language and terms have changed, so I think some of some of it's just kind of minor editing, just to make sure the we're using pieces yeah, the, of language. Uh, the biggest one that I came across that will probably require uh, kind of a significant amount of thought is the there's a metrics release document that we have, and that one is that one's that one's vastly different. <laughs> so some are just small changes. That one is really really different. Yeah, I was I was planning on uh, so right now I think that document is pretty prominent on the metrics page. Okay. Uh, I was planning on separating that out so that uh, I think the metrics page would just have a link to that document to start. Perfect. Yeah. For now and then and then we can discuss what you want the those release notes to look like in the future. Okay. But I, I think we've already kind of discussed that a little bit and uh we yeah. have uh I'm, I'm not sure if we've completely landed on that process yet, other than uh, 
for the release. I, should, I, mean, I, should, I know uh, Armstrong no, I, had some thoughts on that as well. Uh, the the release. I agree. I don't think we've landed on a release process. I did think when I was looking at that document, like writing it out will help us tremendously <laughs> as we try to articulate yeah. Yeah. What, it, what it actually is. That'll help us a ton. Yeah, hopefully there's hopefully there's a way we can kind of balance uh, the, the rigor and validity in our metrics definition work with with a more kind of informal and streamlined process uh so but i i think we i think we need to continue kind of talking about that a little bit agreed and it'd be great i think we can just talk through that document now that i've seen it is like we can basically say let's really look at this document okay great um also kevin i just i was trying to when i was doing this just as a note i was trying to err on the side of like we had a a, a link to say like mission goals and values or something like that in one of the tiles. And we have a mission statement, for example, in the charter. And I didn't think we needed it both places. So I, like I would always, just so you know, I always kind of would move towards removal of things on the knowledge base if we have them somewhere else, or at least on those tiles. You're muted, but. I'm sorry, in the knowledge base? So for example, like if I, oh, not there. So like if I come here mm -hmm. and then I go to about chaos. Mm -hmm. So we have like mission and goals. Yeah. And it's just, it's this. Yeah. But, but we actually have in our charter, like the project mission. <laughs> So I don't, like I didn't, I wonder why we would need it two places here when it's just fully available. Uh, so, so the knowledge base, uh, the knowledge base uses the structure of the community handbook. So if it exists in the okay. community handbook, it exists in the, in the it knowledge is. base, right? So the, okay. so this is, this is one of those, this is one of those where I would, if I was going through this, I would, I would take this and move this over to the community handbook and create an issue there. Uh, because this uh, this would in, this would involve kind of uh, fixing the structure of the community handbook and maybe uh, eliminating a page actually. So yeah, just like eliminating this page just in favor of, of yeah, yeah, we can just we can just point to you can just point to the okay, the charter right that has the mission on it. okay. okay. Um, uh, okay, so well, it, that's helpful. Yeah, so for the yeah for all of the almost all of the the knowledge base structure and the documents that exist within the knowledge base those are like all of these they're just yeah. pointing to handbook pages that's okay. all handbook stuff so uh, and okay. the, the goal, the goal for that knowledge base is that that the structure matches one to one. So okay. that we can, we can make those edits in the Community handbook. Oh, okay, not, and not have to worry about a different structure on the website when we're. Uh, that's helpful so whenever i okay so whenever i am here essentially looking through these tiles yep if i see an issue then go to the community site or the community repo and yep. post that stuff there okay. yeah so think about think about this think about this site as a kind of a uh portal to the handbook yeah it's the it's the graphic user interface that accesses the handbook right so we okay. we're, we're kind of we're preventing we're presenting it in this in this way with kind of the tiles and a little more okay. information but this structure should connect directly to the community handbook okay so now that we're doing this i guess governance should that, be a folder that, in the handbook yeah, uh, i gotcha and then yeah. that raises questions like whether or not we need this yeah. as another example when we in fact just have it right here. Okay. And so this might actually help streamline the handbook a little bit, just because we might yeah. have some of those things up here already. Right. So I would say in regards to project charter, uh, mm -hmm. we could probably pull it out of the handbook in the GitHub repo. So that project mm -hmm. charter is actually a first level file in the in the community repo. Right? So Okay, so that first level file in the community repo, we, we, we can point it to we can go to the about and if they if they go to that community repo that the, the charter would be right there. Uh, so if you if you move it to that higher level, 
then you you'd move it out of the community handbook, but you'd move it to the kind of the front page of the the repo, right? Does that make it, sense? And it would, and yeah, it does, and then it wouldn't show yep. up in here. Is what you're saying? Exactly. Okay. And it, and I think that would be a good way to kind of decide what important documents need to be presented, kind of outside of the handbook versus whether they need to be presented inside the okay. handbook as well. Okay. Because it looks like maybe just merging the handbook into the website as is done here. It just it ended up creating some duplication that we maybe don't yeah. need. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, and I, I think we I think we we've talked about kind of uh, uh, the folder file structure as well, uh, okay. where we need to kind of we need to clean that up a little bit because we don't want uh, we don't want our folder and file structure to get too deep, right? So we only okay. Uh, but but I think those I are you. those are part of the the handbook discussions so okay. uh, no, I maybe I, so first I, I'll, I'll go and I'll, I'll get as much of that website stuff done okay. uh, and then the, the handbook stuff I think we kind of need to talk through a little bit more and there are also some kind of specific documents that still need to be created okay okay good any other questions based on this conversation this is helpful to me with respect to the website and handbook slash knowledge base yeah i think um i'll just be maybe noting down the pages for that we need to take down as well okay so i just jot them down in the doc and when we're done with the work i can just start or open up the sheet people can also help that would be great perfect thank you ruth okay um good okay um another kind of part of just looking at things in the chaos project is not just the website stuff but we also have like contributing docs and codes of conduct you know those kinds of documents that are in um that are in our repos i went ahead and i did an audit of the different codes of conduct that we have across the repositories. And interestingly, we have a couple different codes of conduct in our different repositories, or unsurprisingly. <laughs> um, but it's great, because now we know where these are, you know what I mean? And it allows us to kind of see what we have. Um, so, and then I just made some notes as well. So we had talked about, you know, updating these to main, for example. Um, some of them actually have the code of conduct located within the repository. You know what I mean? Not pointing to a main code of conduct. So I think there's some cleanup that we need to do. Some are pointing to very weird places. So uh, just the point being, I think we just need some updating to be done across these. Some of them are more Grimoire Lab oriented. So for example, the differences between master and main, I know that that might be some issues for you know, some testing stuff. Um, we've been trying to get that done for a while. Um, Anyway, the, the, y'all can take a look at this. I'm slowly working my way through this, and I'll be posting issues probably in every repository where an update is suggested. <laughs> Some are kind of required. Like, we need to not use this code of conduct <laughs> as, as our code of conduct. So some are kind of required. Some are, you know, going to be requests. So and does anybody have any comments on this? Thanks to Don for kind of pulling this information, allowing me to kind of go through it piece by piece. Um, so once this is kind of resolved, my goal is to to kind of get that get this straightened out, and then I'd kind of go through it from a contributing perspective as well. You know what I mean? All of those types of documents, and just kind of see how those are all organized, repo by repo. Yeah, thank you for doing that cleanup work. I didn't know that we had different code of conducts. I thought we had one agreed for the chaos project. 
No, now you know. Interesting. <laughs> so thanks. Super everybody. interesting, isn't it? Yeah. All right. Um, all right. Comment. Thank you, Ruth. Um, I just wanted to tell you that we're kind of working on these these collaborative communities. Um, so the work with OSPO is currently happening. We're having really nice discussions around the OSPO one that was with the to do group. You know, that's that collaboration that's occurring. That was last Thursday. Um, just around in that one, uh, around understanding value that's being created in an OSPO is a really nice conversation. There was a nice uh, to do report that just came out about business value. I don't know if you all saw that. Like it, I think it, I just saw it today. Um, so just about how OSPO is kind of define and create value um, from a university perspective. I'm talking about the connection with chaos and OSPO plus plus on Thursday, just about how we can think about metrics in um, in universities. And I'm not necessarily specifying metrics, really. That discussion is about how we can work together to identify what those different metrics are in different contexts. And then I've been having nice discussions with folks from um, scientific software communities, and that's really just kind of getting started up. So just, it's more just to let you know that the, I think these are going nicely, and the reception has been really positive <laughs> by people wanting to understand metrics in their particular context. So the conversations are great. Does anybody have any questions or comments on those? All right, cool. Um, next is ChaosCon Africa. Ruth, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, sure. Um, so we're planning on having uh, Open Source Community Fest is festival is happening around June. So we're planning on having like a co-located event for Chaos Africa. Um, Open Source Festival is 15th to the 17th of June. So I was thinking it's going to be great. We will have Chaos Con Africa happen um, during that time. And it's, it's going to be, we're planning for about 100 100 attendees for the event and we're just going to have like a few talks um probably a keynote one key just the way chaos gun is held really similar but maybe we plan for 100 because um we have like a lot of people in the community are based in nigeria so we we are going to get a lot of participation from people, hopefully. So it will be hybrid. We're looking at more of in person, though. But I'm planning for hundred attendees total, both um in person and virtual. Um, yeah, and we are also looking for sponsorship. I shared the the project with Matt earlier today. Uh, it told it told me I was muted. It's co-located with what? Um, Open Source Community Africa Festival. Okay. It. I mean, put that in. Great. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. And I think Ruth and I are gonna look for some sponsorship. Um. For. Chaos Con Africa. So is the, are you just going to, I heard you say you're going to kind of follow that model. Are you going to just have like a keynote? Is it a half day? I guess would be a question. Yeah, is like it a full day? Four or five hours. Five hours. Okay. Yeah, we'll just have like um, the keynotes, um, some interactive sessions, and then a workshop. You know, okay. things like, but, but the, the, the idea behind the meetup is um first to create an awareness of you know open source talk about community health try to understand how um you know open source contributors define what they what they understand with health you know discussions around that you know gets people to make their first contributions as well because um, i'm sure, definitely sure would have people that are first time open source contributors or have never contributed open source so get people to make um 
you know, contributions, first contributions to open source and also discuss with people that have been maintaining open source in Africa and see how chaos, kind of like a discussion on how chaos Africa can help. And okay. maybe then we share our plans, share metrics. Yeah, so those are the kind of things we look forward to having for conference. Okay, that sounds great. Okay. Great. Uh, okay, great. So I think Ruth, you and I, it's to try to find some support for Chaos Con Africa. Sure. We'll, get, we'll get to it. Sure. All right. Uh, great. Any questions for Ruth on Chaos Con Africa? All good. Okay. Uh, last on the list, and we I just I'll just keep going. Um, we don't need to. Sh oh, Kevin, yeah. Do do we need to create that page on the website? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, we need to. Okay. Uh, I'll I'll do that. Yeah, I'll get you the details. I we have the next um Chaos Africa meeting next to me so. By next week, I should get you the details for the webpage. Okay, I'll I'll yeah, I'll, I'll have it built, uh, at least uh, okay. partially built by 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 Tuesday of next week, so we can okay. find fine tune any details details after that. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, that made me think on that page when I was thinking about the page. How are you doing registration, Ruth? Is it free or is it? That, that's what I'm thinking about because um, this is the first event. I don't know if we're going to charge for the registration. The registration will be handled via Open Collective. Um, yeah. We have our own collective, but I, I still do not know if. From, from prior experience, we, we recommend you charge something, even if okay. it's very small, because otherwise people will register and then not show up just because there's no connection with it. We ran into this one with one chaos con in San Diego where we made it zero dollars. And, and and the problem is, is we it was because we were maxed on space, we simply couldn't allow other people in. And then as a result, like over half the people who registered to occupy space didn't show up. And the other people who wanted to come couldn't come because they couldn't register because it was full. So does that make sense? Like even if you just charge five dollars or or some even just a couple dollars, like just some minimal amount, just to get some commitment. Unless you have access to a lot of space, right? I mean, if the if it's being held someplace that has you know a hundred or two hundred person occupancy, maybe it's not. An issue. Would you like to get a question or comment? No, I don't think they have a question, but I think I'm in support with what you said about charging for the events. Yeah, you got a great point that sometimes when you host an event and people are really interested to join, they might register for the event at the end of the day. One or two things will make them to come to the event. But charging a little token for me is kind of, kind of a commitment to them to decide that okay, I paid for this and I will surely come. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Delight and Matt. I think, I think five dollars should be a fair amount. Well, you decide whatever you need to do. And it is pretty easy to set it up in uh, an um, open collective. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, we just any other comments or questions for Ruth? Uh, thanks, Kevin. Okay, thanks, thank you. I saw your comment. Yeah, we we have for diversity access ticket. Okay. Um, I think the honestly, I think Chaos Con is, from my perspective, pretty good. We have our speakers. We have our the live stream is sorted out. Um, just so you know, there is if you didn't know, there is a live stream of Chaos Con that's being provided by the Linux Foundation. That was a surprise to me. Um, 
<laughs> free of <laughs> charge? It's being, right? uh, well, it's, I think when you go through the application process, there's just an option to, to watch the live stream. Oh, they so, used, to, I mean, I they think used to charge for that. Yeah, I mean, well, it's free of charge for us. Yeah, I, okay. I confirmed. I'm like, is this, because I we didn't ask for it. And so they, they, just, do, they do a really good job, so. Yeah, so I they do that free, that's awesome. It. Yeah, so it's, it's free. Um, just because we are doing the breakout sessions, you know how we're doing like a, a question with breakout sessions in the live version, and then another question with some breakout sessions. You know what I mean? We had talked about like trying to host those breakout sessions for the online folks via some, but we're not going to do that. There's like a hundred people that are registered to watch it online. So we're just going to say, here's one of the keynotes. And then we can coordinate with the folks on site who are doing the live stream just to stop the live stream. You know what I mean? And we'll just, before we stop the live stream, we'll say, we'll be back in you know 30 minutes. Please feel free to rejoin us. But we just thought that the logistics of trying to like coordinate a hundred people into breakout rooms is just is just too much, <laughs> and we need moderators or facilitators in each one of the breakout rooms. <laughs> so uh, basically, we'll just be live streaming the keynotes is what it comes in the the software discussion and the kickoff. You know all those kind of things that aren't discussion oriented. So yeah, um, yeah. So, so the live yeah, stream. Sorry, Mark. The live stream no, no. won't be on the YouTube, on the OSS NA platform. It's on the OSS NA platform. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Would will we be able to get a copy of that to put on our YouTube channel? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. It's it's gonna be. I don't know how that'll show up, but I mean, it was live streamed and recorded. So, so, so just have to ask them for the recording and. Uh huh. Okay. Yep. Um, okay, so Garrett just said, if you want to invite someone to join without paying, you can give out diversity access tickets. Do you have a comment on that, Georg? About how that works? That was on the previous uh, conversation about charging for the ChaosCon Africa event, and Ruth oh, already okay. acknowledged that um, she read the comment. It was just, I gotcha. there are concerns with charging, and I want to say that we have solutions for that. Gotcha. Thank you. I, I will. Uh, I think Georg has set up registration for for multiple chaos cons in the past. So I would would encourage you to reach out to him if you have any questions. Yeah. Hello. Sorry. Yeah, sorry totally. to offer your assistance, Georg. No worries. Delight, do you have a comment? Yeah, I just got the suggestion concerning the charging for chaos um Africa for chaos con Africa. Um, I just got an idea. I don't know whether it's appropriate to so give us give them um, like a free ticket to about maybe two persons or five persons that is going to register in this period of time. I don't know how you think. Maybe in the first week, the first five persons that register will get a free ticket something like that to make it more interesting since the first event being hosted in Africa. Yeah, I think it's something like early bed tickets, something. Like yeah, that. yeah. So, thank you, thank you, Blythe. If you want to do something like that, I don't know if Open Collective supports that. You might have to go with something like Eventbrite, where you can, where you have a lot more options for. Only five free tickets are available with this registration code, or something. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll sort that out. I will say that one of the things to think about. I know we're out of time, but one of the things to think about, Ruth, is making sure the money from Eventbrite can get into Open Collective. And does that work pretty easily, Georg? From Eventbrite, the way we do it right now is I collect the funds and then I donate it to Open. So, okay. It's a roundabout way and we get charged twice on the Eventbrite side and on the Open Collective side. So, <laughs> so you lose a little bit of money. Yeah, if we do it directly in 
Open Collective, it's cleaner, but Open Collective has very limited functionality. Okay. One of the reasons why we didn't use it for ChaosCon Europe was we wanted to ask for, uh, do you accept the code of conduct if you come to this event? We wanted to ask about dietary restrictions and some demographic information and Open Collective just would not allow us to have custom questions as part of the registration process. We couldn't separate afternoon events. Wasn't that also an issue? Mm -hmm. Correct. That was another issue. Okay. Okay. Well, things to think about, Ruth. <laughs> yes. For you. Okay. All right. We are at the end of time. Everybody, I really appreciate the conversation. I appreciate the feedback. We're making good progress on all sorts of things. So thanks for spending part of your day here. Thanks, everyone. Good to see you. Okay, take care. Bye. Bye.